finding gym time is ridiculous. It's a challenge. It's the biggest fight for any organization or team that happens in Nova Scotia. He just really wanted to change that. I've always wanted my own spot where I can have the keys and, and just get in and just shoot some hoops. This facility is really, the purpose is to give back to the community. They are, they're not going to be restricted to get in the gym if they want to and get some training in. Certainly the idea was to have a dedicated basketball facility which doesn't exist here or really anywhere in the Atlantic provinces. Um, he hasn't necessarily like reinvented the wheel, but to bring something that we don't have is the entire idea behind it. Uh, I always like to think out of the box and trying to keep the, the the kids in the gym as, as long as possible. So we've added a barbershop. We all know that kids love, I mean, I myself love to get my hair cut. Sometimes a better haircut will make you feel better about yourself and build your confidence. We can carry that onto the courts. We have a little massage table there. I like to work with younger athletes to teach them how to recover and take care of their bodies, especially in this facility that's specific to basketball players. We also have some drinks. And upstairs, I think it's my favorite one because you can just hang out, chill. There's a video game for the kids. There's foosball, ping ball. It's a, it's, it's a facility, but it's more of a home. The best thing about this is that, you know, Ming makes this accessible for trainers and coaches and teams just like myself at any time of the day that, that works for us. It's perfect for, for guys like me. Ming's a great guy, man. Like, he's always there for the kids. That's just one thing about him. You know, even when they're down or not feeling great or they have something on their mind, maybe if they don't write it down, they can just come shoot some hoops or play foosball or things like that. I think it's a beautiful thing. Growing up, um, we didn't have too many opportunities where we had uh, pro basketball players coming in and speaking to us and whatnot. Like we, a lot of what we had to see is what we had to kind of seek out for ourselves. So to come in and have this in the heart of Halifax where you can still have that same type of access, see kids coming here with joy and playing, um, I think it's needed. It's a long journey. It's a really, really long journey from, you know, from Benin, small country, French speaking, uh, took the plane by myself. Uh, no mom, no dad was around, uh, moved to, to the state. Um, but, you know, fell in love with the game and, you know, obviously, then after the state, moved to Canada, where, you know, retired here, having a wife and kids, um, and, you know, now I kind of started my company and a youth program and trying to give back as much as I can and try to change lives. This guy has a half a million dollar education that he got for free through basketball. And that's been what we've preached and what he's preached from the beginning was to use basketball, not to let basketball use you. So while he's not in the NBA and he's a seven foot tall guy walking around the city, you know, he has a bigger purpose than just putting the ball in the hoop. And it's to really just help kids and, and not necessarily even kids. Some of these guys are young adults. There's 23 year olds that are calling him, you know, for life advice. He really touches a lot of people uh, that doesn't hit Instagram or necessarily their website uh, that people don't know about. Um, and, and it's sort of just his calling. In school, I'd say I was a good student, but I wasn't the best student in my full potential. And then Ming really believed in me and saw that I could do much better than what I could and then I started to believe in myself not just that like just outside being a teenager growing up like Ming really helped me and molded me into who I am and how Ming really cared for you always wanting the best for you as a player you know kind of gives uh, kids from Halifax and like Nova Scotia a way to be on the same platform in other cities while still being home for me to know what makes the kid tick, I need to understand him better. And the only way I can understand the kids better is by asking questions to the parents and make sure I have a relationship with them. That's kind of what you want from, you know, the parents and, and, and the kids. You want to be a family while you're still training them. I have to be honest, uh, first being black is, is pretty challenging. Um, and, and also adding on top of that being an immigrant, uh, it's, 
very challenging. You know, we have a lot of roadblocks, to be honest. Uh, a lot of no's, a lot of maybe, uh, and never got back. What's next? Well, uh, I think my goal is to partner with, you know, trainers, coaches, you know, any programs in a private school are looking to grow the game. Um, me starting this to, sh to show them that it's possible. Um, now it's more, let's work together because at the end of the day, I can't do it by myself. I got the call this morning. The windows are broken, glass on the floor. I told her to okay, call the cops. Whoever it is think they can just break our company. You can't 